And this piece of clay is around um, two pound and a half. Again, at first I center and uh, for centering, I don't usually like to uh, color sky high. I am uh, pushing it down instead. Just uh, my right hand staying on the same spot and brace my my arm right on the splash pen and the left hand is doing the, the pushing. Okay, and I'm ready to open the hole. Just use my thumb. Just enough water, you see that I just uh, dip in, in the water. I don't usually like to use a sponge to do that because uh, you end up with uh, get using too much water. So first I will drill all the way till the right thickness. Um, I usually like to have um, a, a foot rim so that the whole piece uh, looks lighter. So. I will usually uh, leave the bottom around uh, 3 8 to half an inch thick. So use my finger drill all the way down. And then um, I don't usually check it, but uh, I can check it. Actually, this piece is a little bit too thin now. So what if your piece is too thin? Okay, let me uh, remove the wire. What if your piece is too thin? What do you do? Actually, you can uh, go ahead and uh, just open it up from the side. See that my finger is open on the side. Um, without uh, touching the middle section. I right, just keep on opening it. And then now there's a clay here, so I'm going to push the clay toward the center. So redistribute the clay, distribute the clay, squeeze it from the outside. Now the base is a bit thicker. Okay, so that's when you accidentally um, drill too uh, to deep. Usually, you want to remove water to uh, be able to see because sometimes the water's there, uh, you won't be able to see it. So you might end up with drilling too deep. So when you are drilling it too deep, just do what I just did. Open the wider part on the outside part and then uh, just move the clay from the side to the center. And uh, you can use a uh, wooden rib to uh, compress. Since you try to move that, that very center might be a bit too, uh, too weak. So you can use your wooden rib to just compressed it. Right, and then ready to uh, lift up the wall. Uh, before I lift, usually people tend to end up with uh, too much clay in the corner, so my suggestion for you is that you might want to uh, make a little indentation, meaning uh, you are, see that I'm using my fingertip to dig the, the clay a little bit deeper. So you have a little groove there, and then you're going to pull all the clay from the groove so that you don't end up with having too much clay in the corner. So there's a little groove there. Uh, before I pour it up, that, this is a little bit too wide, so 
you could uh, color in a little bit. Still, the groove is there, so just keep the clay from the little indentation. Um, my initial lifting, usually, I'm using my left hand to just grab the clay, grab, and then move it up. And the right hand is kind of stabilize the thumb, and maybe a little bit control on the rim here. So you have a both hands, so both hands coordinate together, okay? Cooperate together. So hold it here, stabilize the thumb, and the hand is holding on the rim here. And just initial lifting. And no rush, take your time. And slowly release. That's the uh, pulling. And since I'm going to close the, the, the top, so I'm keeping the top a bit narrow. So later on, you don't need to have to spend a lot of effort trying to close it. And I'm still having a, a lot of clay in here, so I'm going to pull more. But before I go ahead and do that, make sure it is slippery everywhere. Right now, my thumb is too short to do the same thing that I, my initial pulling. So this time I'm going to replace with my right thumb, extend it with my right thumb. Extend it. And do the same, gripping the clay. And uh, since I'm going to uh, trim later to uh, fit the, the lid, so I tend to leave the wall a bit thicker so that you have more clay to adjust. So now I think it's, uh, I got it enough and I don't want to be uh, too tall here either. So I'm just going to maybe uh, do a very final adjust. Try to squeeze a little bit more clay from the very bottom. Okay. Keeping the opening smaller, so I am uh, pulling slightly using the thumb and the finger underneath and then just leave the clay. And the right hand is supporting it and also kind of helping to push. Right, before I do further, I want to clean up everywhere. First, uh, keep the wall straight. And you see when I am uh, able to uh, reach out see that my thumb is kind of helping to stabilize the rim when I'm doing that see that the thumb is on top of the rib I can go ahead and remove the clay from the corner.
there's a little slip inside so I'm going to uh, go ahead and remove it and still not quite straight a little bit taper so I'm going to uh, keep it straight Now, you see that I still have a, a, a little bit thicker clay here because I'm going to uh, keep on pulling and close it. So that's why I uh, keep tend to keep the rim a bit thicker. I try to uh, slightly pull inward and slightly, slightly uh, lift. Still keeping the rim thick. Okay, one more time. So before I close further, because when I try to pull, this part is not straight anymore. So I am uh, going back to compress it. You keep on pulling the clay, move, move it to the center, pull this way and pull. Um, you see that you use a little, uh, a small amount of water, not, didn't even use a, a whole lot of water. This is, I'm using just my fingertip. There's not much of a friction, so I don't need to have so much water. Okay, before I close further, uh, while I can still reach inside, I'm going to smooth my throwing mark and put the finger inside to support it and using the metal rib to uh, smooth So now I'm going to uh, close the top. And before I close further, uh, I want to remove the uh, water or slip so that um, it's a little bit stronger. When you have a slip and you try to seal it, Usually that part is uh, a bit weak, so removing the uh, slip is, is helping it. And also when you're ready to trim, you, you, after you cut it, 
you might want to do a little bit of compression. So I remove the uh, slip and then close in the top. Now the uh, air is trapped inside, so a uh, little bit of uh, comp compression is not going to hurt. And it depends if you have enough clay, you want to make a knob, you can make a knob. Otherwise, you could uh, have a jar, a cover jar without a knob. Okay, so the, the box is completely sealed and um, usually uh, people use a, um, uh, a wooden stick to uh, push the little uh, indentation there but uh, I don't want to do that okay I want to show you my way of doing it is when it gets data hard I'm using my number eight trimming tool and just go in and cut a uh, little uh, groove and then cut it off okay so that way it's more clean uh, the, 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 the uh, edge is straight but before I remove it from the wheel I like to release the air because you don't want to trap the air once the air trap inside the whole piece of string when uh, it, it's it's drying and the air has nowhere to go so where air will find a weaker spot to escape it's probably from the top so the top might be uh, getting cracked so make sure you uh, uh, get a, a air air hole for inside air to uh, escape and uh, you can decide it you can put it anywhere but I usually like to do uh, right where I'm going to cut the groove maybe a um, little bit of, more than half, halfway up. Okay, just a, a tiny hole using my um, my knife, number ten knife. Can you use a needle too? Okay, either way, so that that air is able to uh, release from uh, the uh, shrinkage. And I will show you how I finish up uh, trim, fit the piece together when it's dead hard.